Thank you for meeting with me. Can you state your first and last name and what you do for work? My name is Mariah Stacona. I'm the Native American liaison here at Madras High School. And basically what I do here is I'm trying to bridge the gap between Madras community and the Warm Springs tribal members. Um, I'm a tribal member myself from Warm Springs. And so kind of just having, being that familiar face for people here, I think is gonna go a long ways to try to really connect people because in the past, there were a lot of complaints of, you know, we didn't mesh well together within the communities. And so that's one of my main purposes here is just really try to bridge that gap between people and then really advocate for Native American students here uh, they go through a lot in their home lives and so just being someone constant in their life who's going to support them love them and you know try to show them you know push them in the right direction um, that's basically my job what was your upbringing like yeah yeah so i am one of 11 kids um, some of them are Native American, some of them are Mexican. So I really grew up in a diverse community. But as far as Warm Springs, it is a special, I wanna say special community. You know, there's a lot going on there, both positive and negative. Um, and I hate to bring it up, but you know, that's what kids go through each day. And being able to understand what they go through, all the hardships that, that you know, come with living on a reservation, um, as far as like the water supply right now, people can't drink tap water. And so that's just one of the hardships people have to deal with living on the reservation. Um, I personally didn't live on the reservation for most of my life. I just was there periodically. Um, but I was very much so involved. Um, and yeah, so I would basically lived here in Madras but I would always you know, have family members live down in Warm Springs. I would go down there with them. Um, like I said, I'm one of 11 kiddos. Um, we have a split family, but it made it fun. There's a lot of us. We're really close, although we don't share the same mom and dad, all of us, but, um, but yeah. What are some of the challenges that you faced along the way? Okay. Yeah, I'll start over a little bit. So I'll just start with my experience kind of in middle school, uh, only because kind of growing up as a younger kid, I don't remember too, mu too much up until middle school. I feel like I was just born into middle school. <laughs> um, so like I said, we, my family, we grew up poor and that's nothing to be embarrassed about. It just, it kind of happened. You know, it was hard. My mom was single. She raised us as kiddos by herself and kind of just seeing her struggles of, you know, how are we gonna pay our, our rent? How are we gonna, you know, pay for our next meal? Stuff like that really pulls on your heartstrings. And I think that's what led me to where I'm at now, um, wanting to give back to the kids, knowing that they might struggle um, at their home life and just being somebody who can be like, hey, I've been there. I know what you've been through. This is how you can get through it. Um, it's going to be okay. You know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I think a lot of kids need to see people struggle. You know, we're, we're all, we're adults and we act like we know what we're doing, but, you know, we've been in their shoes, you know. And so I think that is the biggest advantage I have to this job is knowing I can look a student in their eyes, specifically a Native American student, because that's where my job is kind of geared to. It's just being able to be like, hey, I know exactly where you live. I know which neighborhood you're in. I know you have to wake up at four in the morning to get to school. Um, you know, just specific things like that. I can relate to with those hardships and then bringing them back like, hey, it's gonna be okay. What do you enjoy about the work that you do? Yeah, so, I mean, I've been in this position for about two weeks now. And so you would think not a lot has happened but just in this last week alone, I think one of the biggest eye openers for me is, I'll touch a little bit on the subject on what happened, is we had a Native American gal. She, I don't know if I can say this on the scene, but I'll just talk to you guys about it, is she got caught smoking weed in the bathroom. And so at that point they come into the office and they have me speak on her behalf and just advocate for her and be like, hey, like I'm on your side. We gotta figure out a plan on what we can do to help you get better. Um, and kind of a sad situation, she went home um, and 
kind of self-inflicted harm um, that same night after we talked to her about kind of disciplining her regarding that situation. But anyway, the reason why I bring this up is because the next day, the next few days, she comes back to school, which is awesome. And her and I just have a heart to heart. Like, hey, what's going on? How can I help you just be better mentally? It has nothing to do with school, just you and I, what's going on? And really get into the root of the problem. And just kind of having those heart to heart moments with those students and realizing this is bigger than school for some of these kids. She easily could have taken her life that night and just her coming to me and saying, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for talking to me is probably the biggest reward for me in this position. And just hearing from the past, there's going to be more situations like this. And really just knowing I can impact a student's life in a positive way is the whole reason why I took this job. Um, so that's the most rewarding part. What do you want for your students? Yeah, so what I personally want to see, the goals that I've set for myself, is I want to make sure at least 98% of the Native American students graduate high school. And I know we've had some great success in the past. I think right now we're currently sitting around 90% Native Americans graduating. Um, and that was through the COVID years. And so I really want to make sure we carry those numbers on and at least 98%. The, the goal is 100%, of, of course, but 98% seems realistic with getting those kids graduated from high school. And then I really want to make sure those students who are thinking of going to college, um, just letting them know it's possible, you know, and helping them go to fill out a higher education application because we have a program in Warm Springs that they will pay for part of your tuition, your books, and your room and board. And so we have the resources, but the kids here, they just don't know them. And so I really want to help those students who wanna to go to college um, get there and not just say, okay, you graduated, my job's done. Check in on them when they go to college, make sure they see it through. Um, so that's kind of my personal goal. What kind of skills do you need to be successful in the work that you do? Yeah, so I think in order to do this position well, oh no, I'll start over. I think in order to do this position and do it well, you really need to have people skills and a little bit of empathy because these kids do go through a lot. And just being really flexible with what that student needs. Some kids might need somebody who's hard on them. Some kids might need kind of like a mothering person for them. Um, so it kind of just, you have to be really flexible to do this job and also not get too tied up in the emotions of it. Um, really learn how to disconnect yourself once you're away from the kiddos because sometimes, you know, like dealing with kids, home life, and then you got to come home to your own life, you kind of have to have that separation of duties. It's going to be really key for this position because you don't want to carry on you know, a hard day going home and then take it out on your family, you know? So you have to just be really flexible and love what you do. You gotta love these students. You gotta make sure, you can't just say you love them, you have to love them. They're gonna know that, they're gonna know the difference. What does your average workday look like? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So for me, my average workday, I guess every day is gonna look a little bit different but kind of to sum it up is I'll get here and right off the bat, we kind of have students who we know we need to work with in the morning and make sure that they're okay to go to their first period. And so for me, it comes into just having that conversation like, hey, good morning, how's your day going? Like, are you ready for school? Uh, so just dealing with kiddos, making sure they're in the right headspace to get to class. And then if they're not, just seeing what we can do to, to help that student and then I also roam the halls during each passing period, make sure I just kind of have a presence with the students, kind of create that relationship through the hallways, just talking with them, checking in with them, and then having meetings with them throughout the day. And what I'm really focusing on this semester as we start off the new year and the new normal year outside of COVID um, is just really setting those academic goals for those students and making sure they have a plan outlined 
um, for the year because it is the first year back that we're kind of normal. Um, and so that's basically what I've been doing this first week of school is just pulling students out, having those academic meetings, um, and then just kind of dealing with whatever pops up. But yeah, that's kind of like a normal day. It's kind of hard to explain a normal work day in this position because I am the Native American liaison, but you kind of pull from different strings, like, like a counselor type position, like an educator, like a teacher. Um, and so there's just like, you never know what's going to happen in my job. And that's kind of the cool part about it is each day is going to be different. I'm going to be dealing with different personalities every single day, different issues. And so, like I said, you really got to be flexible within this position. What advice would you give for students who are unsure about college versus career? Yeah. Yeah, so kids who don't want to go to college and who are openly like, hey, school is not for me. Like, what else can I do? You know, I really try to encourage them, just be involved in your community. Be a positive person um, in society, but just be involved in something, be positive. There's also trade schools. There's other things you can do. Follow your hobbies. Um, and then really just trying to see what that student loves to do and then push them in that direction. If it's, if it's photography, you know, go out, go work until you can buy a camera and then go travel, go, go take pictures of whatever you want to do. Just really follow what your passion is, what your, cause if you don't love what you do, it's not going to last long. You know, if I didn't love this position after this year, I would probably quit. It's a hard job. You got to love what you want to do. And so that's what I really try to explain to these students, find what you love and then go from there. If it's not college, it's not college. But I really try to encourage them to get out, step out of your comfort zone, go experience new, new things and then come back to your community and give back. What inspires you about the work that you do? I think the biggest thing for me growing up is just seeing those students who had a lot harder time than I did. You know, I didn't have a perfect life growing up, but it could have been a lot worse. And I've seen those students who just had a really tough time and they didn't make it. And so I kind of use that experience as, what if I could have been that person for that kiddo? And their life could have been a total different career path. It could have been, because we have a lot of kids who fall into drug and alcohol here. And so basically I looked at that and be like, if I was the person I want to be now, then their life would have been completely different. You know, I can, I can make that change. I can realize a student might fall into that, um, I don't know how to word it. I guess I just want to be the person that can change a kid's life. You know, don't let it, don't let them just slip through the cracks. I know I can be the person who's like, you know what, this is what's going to happen if you go down this path. Let's change that together so you can have a better life for yourself and possibly for your family. Do you have any career advice for students? My career advice would be, like I kind of hit it a little bit. My career advice would be just finding something you love and that are, you're super passionate about. Because once you find that, your job is going to be super easy. Your career, your life is going to be so much better walking into a job that you love, that you look forward to. And in return, you're going to be a better, better worker, a better educator, a better counselor, whatever it might be. If you love what you're going to do, you're going to be that much better at your job and you're going to affect lives in a positive way that much better. You know, we're all different. Just be a good person. And that's half the battle. If you can be a good person, you know, you're going to make your life a lot easier. And then also just be financially responsible at an early age. You know, don't dig yourself into a bad hole. And then also just be kind to others. You know, you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what happened the day before, why they're acting a certain way. So if you can be kind to somebody every day, that's going to make your community better. That's going to make yourself better. That's going to affect that person um, moving forward. And so just being kind, being helpful, be a good person, I would say is the basic life skills that, um, that I recommend.